Hi, hello, welcome back to our channel. So today we are going to talk about the difference between the milk teeth and the permanent teeth. So come, let's go into the topic today. So when it comes to differentiation, we have various criteria in it, and the first criteria is size. So when it comes to size, the primary tooth is smaller than the permanent tooth, and the primary tooth has larger or wider mesiodistal width when compared to the occlusal cervical width. And when it comes to permanent tooth, in anteriors we have increased cervical uh, occlusal width when compared to the mesiodistal width. So the next criteria is shape. So when it comes to shape, the primary tooth has the cervical ridge to be so prominent and when it comes to permanent tooth, the cervical ridge is not so prominent and when it comes to primary tooth, the uh, occlusal table is narrow because of the constriction of the buccal and lingual uh, walls. And when it comes to permanent tooth, the occlusal table is broader when it compares to the primary tooth because of the uh, not so prominent constriction of the buccal and lingual walls. And when it comes to uh, cervical constriction, it is so prominent in primary and it is not so prominent in permanent tooth. And when it comes to mammalons, in primary tooth, the mammalons are absent and in permanent tooth, the mammalons are present in the young permanent tooth. And the next criteria is numbers. So when it comes to numbers in primary tooth, we have 20 and in permanent tooth, we have 32. And in primary tooth, we have uh, canine incisors and molars and we don't have premolars and when it comes to permanent tooth we have premolars the next criteria is color so when it comes to color we all know the primary tooth is also known as milk tooth so the color of the primary tooth is white because the uh, refractive index of the enamel and the milk is same so it is known as milk tooth also and it has a white lighter in color and when it comes to permanent tooth, the color of the permanent tooth is light yellowish grey color. So the next criteria is contact point. And when it comes to contact point, in primary tooth it is not a contact point, it is a contact surface. Because when the two tooth contact each other, they have a contact surface and not just a point. And that surface is located gingivally. And when it comes to permanent tooth, the uh, contact area is just a point and that point is located occlusally. So the next criteria is pulp. So when it comes to pulp, the primary tooth has a larger pulp chamber when compared to the permanent tooth. And in primary tooth, the pulp horns are at higher level, especially on the mesial surface of the tooth. And when it comes to permanent tooth, the pulp horns are relatively shorter uh, from the outer surface of the enamel. And the next is the root canal. When it comes to root canal, the uh, root canals are narrow with tortures in primary tooth. And when it comes to permanent tooth, the root canals are wider, comparatively wider and does not have so much of branches. And when it comes to uh, primary tooth, it has a uh, much more uh, accessory canal in the floor of the pulp chamber in permanent tooth we don't have axillary canal in the pulp chamber and when it comes to the vascularization in pulp the vascularization is much more in primary tooth and they have easy repairing system in the primary tooth and when compared to the permanent tooth we have not much more uh, repairing uh, efficiency and the uh, vascularization is also minimal so the next criteria is root. So when it comes to root in primary tooth, especially in the anteriors of the primary tooth, the mesiodistal width of the root is narrow when compared to the permanent tooth. When it comes to permanent tooth, it is slightly broader mesiodistal width in the anterior roots. And the primary tooth are slender and narrow and longer when compared to its size of the crown. And in permanent tooth, the size of the root is smaller when compared to the size of the crown. And the flaring of the root is more in uh, primary tooth, especially in the apical region, 
when compared to the permanent tooth it does not flare in the cervical or in the apical region and the uh, physiological resorption is taken place in the primary tooth and the physiological resorption does not takes place in the permanent tooth so the final criteria is histology when it comes to histology the enamel and dentin is more mineralized in permanent tooth and is less mineralized in the primary tooth and the thickness of the enamel and dentin is less in primary tooth and more in permanent tooth and when it comes to the enamel rods the enamel rods are directed to the occlusal surface in the cervical region in primary tooth and in permanent tooth the enamel rods are uh, gingivally sloped or uh, horizontally sloped and in primary tooth the enamel rods are occlusally sloped and the advantage of this occlusal sloping is when we uh, prepare a class 2 um cavity in a primary tooth we don't have to remove the uh, unsupported enamel rods in permanent tooth we have to remove the unsupported enamel rods if it is present so if you like this video please do like share and subscribe to this channel and we have much more videos for you